Look, maybe it's me. Maybe in my old age, I'm getting soft. But these two wide receivers at their current price tag are ideal fits for dynasty rosters who don't want to break the bank for help on their team. So let's find out who. What's up, everybody? Nate List from DynastyRankings.com back with you one more time. And maybe I let my old age get the best of me this week as we enter training camp with some of these younger, talented draft picks entering the situation. We're going to find some of these previously high-end, older veteran wide receivers start to gain a little bit of value in the market. And I just couldn't help myself this week. So let's get right into it. Robert Woods. The next time someone tells you that late career breakouts don't happen, please direct them to Robert Woods. I mean, it's not a shocker to me that after four seasons in Buffalo while playing second fiddle to Sammy Watkins, Woods couldn't break out with botched boob job arms like EJ Manuel, Kyle Orton, and Tyrod Taylor throwing him the ball. Yet once exiting Buffalo, an offense that ranked 31st and 32nd in back-to-back seasons in pass attempts... He flourished because as soon as he landed with the Rams, he stole the show out targeting Brandon Cooks and Cooper Cup in back to back seasons as he ripped his way to a wide receiver 16 and wide receiver 12 finish. And even last year, prior to the midseason ACL tear, Woods again began to find his rhythm in this offense. As you can see highlighted, Woods over his final five weeks prior to injury had already produced three wide receiver one weeks with a fantasy point per game average of 21.7. And I don't want to read too deeply into things, but what can I say? I'm my own worst enemy. So for the exact same reason that we love Ryan Tannehill to A.J. Brown, we should love the idea of a healthy Robert Woods with him as well. Because precision route runner with yards after the catch ability meets accurate passer is a match made in heaven, just ask Jimmy Garoppolo and Debo Samuel. And Woods at age 29 was still toasting defenders in the NFL. I mean, just look at Robert Woods' target separation and route win rate ranks. Try saying that five times fast. Number four in total target separation at 2.7 yards per route, as well as a wide receiver 18 finish in route win rate at 43.9%. And even prior to last season, Robert Woods had already finished top 10 in yards after the catch for three consecutive seasons. Let that sink in. So if you're ignoring Robert Woods in 2022 because he's older and he plays for the Titans and he's coming off of an ACL tear... He's not on the PUP, by the way. Or because they added Traylon Burks in the NFL draft, then you are playing yourself like Jerry Seinfeld. (laughs) Michael Thomas. I just love talking about Michael Thomas. However, in the last two years, there have been more reported sightings of Bigfoot than Michael Thomas. And I'm not kidding. But prior to one of the longest ankle rehabs in known American history, Thomas was one of the league's healthiest wide receivers. Missing just one game in his first four full seasons in the NFL while also finishing as a top seven or better fantasy player. But after missing most of 2020, all of 2021, turning nearly 30 years old and then losing Drew Brees along the way, Dynasty Gamers lost faith. Until now. Michael Thomas is officially back. And if it wasn't enough for fantasy football players hearing this from Nick Underhill, Thomas himself came out and told you where you can shove your injury predictors. Because as proven throughout time, speed at the wide receiver position is overrated. And fortunately for Jameis Winston, Michael Thomas isn't and hasn't been a deep threat as evidenced by his career high average depth of target of the wide receiver 67. However, Michael Thomas has been one thing, an insanely efficient and simple target for any quarterback that's throwing to him. In fact, prior to 2020, which was a lost season for Michael Thomas, in 2018 and 2019, Michael Thomas ranked top nine or higher in quarterback rating per target. The other thing that Michael Thomas has been? Insanely sure-handed. Over the past three seasons, Thomas has seen 388 targets, which equated to just eight overall drops, which is a rate just barely above 2%. But I get it. Just like Traylon Burks with Robert Woods, the expectation that Chris Olave will enter this offense and immediately steal the workload is running through people's minds. 
Look, there's no doubt that the Saints have big long-term plans for Olave, but I question if Jameis Winston is the guy to turn him into a year one star. Because for the past five seasons, while under offensive coordinator Pete Carmichael, this offense that was once one of the league's most pass-heavy has finished four of the last five seasons outside the top 19 in pass attempts. So what does this mean? Well, not only will the Saints' passing volume likely be outside the top 15 this year yet again, but the roles these players play will also be affected by Winston as well. Because you just can't convince me that with Jarvis Landry on this roster, a player with a slot rate of at least 45% on average per year, and Michael Thomas, another player on this roster with an average slot rate of 19%, that Alave will play anywhere else but the outside this season, he offers just far too much dynamism and speed not to. So here's the problem. Last season, Winston was rarely asked to go deep. In fact, his 3.1 deep ball pass attempts per game ranked him outside the top 28 at the position. And even when he was throwing deep, he looked like the worst Saints quarterback since Kevin James. Hey, if you're not having fun, you're welcome to ride the bench. Seriously, his deep ball accuracy barely registered on player profiler and his performance versus coverage is, this is not an error. Even on Pro Sports Reference, Jameis Winston's on-target passing ranked him between Mike White and Tyrod Taylor, and he was also worse than Drew Locke. So here's my argument. Prior to today, Thomas was valued roughly the equivalent of a mid-2022 second-round rookie pick. And despite the good news about his health, as soon as these Chris Olave practice videos come out, Rookie enthusiasts will be covering themselves in Astroglide and sliding into everyone's DMs, begging with a ball gag in their mouth for these players. You get it. Meanwhile, the proven, elite, always healthy, short area, quarterback's best friend, Michael Thomas, will once again be the beneficiary of what could be a solid defense and a dink and dunk offense. But what do I know? I don't have an interdimensional injury predictor strapped to my hip. What's up, guys? Thank you very much for once again checking out the video. If you love the show and you enjoyed what you see, do me a favor. Hit the subscribe button below. And of course, as always, go to the link in the description. Join my Discord server. We have over 700 members, and this thing is a melee 24 hours a day, seven days a week. This is an awesome community. I'm going to brag here for a minute. In less than two weeks, we threw together a six-league tournament where we raised $800 as a donation to charity for Toys for Tots. So again, very great community, solid members. We've got all the channels in the world you can imagine. Come join us. Be a part of that community. Again, guys, thank you so much for checking it out, and I will see you next week.